Mustang Units offers other fine jetters equipped with many options. The 2200 series is an industrial heavy duty group of jetters achieving 2200 PSI. Although the principles are the same, there are many different fittings and accessory devices that need to be understood. A quick survey of this group of jetters points out their differences followed by an operation and troubleshooting segment to help you better understand this fine machine. The 2200 series heavy duty industrial jetters include the 2250G four wheeled cart gas fired jetter, the 2200TM truck mount option for bed installation, and the 2200G two wheel cart model, all supplying 2200 PSI to the outlet hose. The LP gas fired jetters available are the 2250 LP four wheel cart, the 2200 LP two wheel cart, and finally, the 2250 single phase 220 volt or the single phase or three phase 220 volt or 440 volt electric motor models available on the two wheel and the four wheel cart. These units must be wired to meet the electrical codes in your area. All of these units employ the use of the following fittings. The water inlet shutoff valve. The filter is located to the rear and below this assembly. Remove this screen and clean each time the jetter is used. The pulse generator is similar to the pulse control lever and the pulse eliminator on the 10 and 12 E. Turn it clockwise all the way in for pulse generation and counterclockwise all the way out to eliminate the pulse. For proper operation, check to see that this handle is all the way in or all the way out. The siphon injector is controlled by this spigot. Turn clockwise to inject liquids such as root destroyers. After injection is complete, turn the spigot counterclockwise to close. The fluid filled pressure gauge and the high pressure snap coupling. Make sure the outlet on the hose reel is attached to this fitting. The water outlet valve. It makes priming the pump easy. Have this valve in the open position before starting the pump and close after prime to achieve correct pressures for jetting. The outlet drain hose. Water will drain from this hose whenever the outlet valve is open. If you are jetting inside, use the five gallon holding tanks to collect this runoff. An outstanding feature for pump longevity is the high temperature dump valve. This valve automatically releases hot water from the pump, drawing cold water in to replace it. This valve opens periodically during use with the wash wand. The gas fired engine needs routine maintenance. You will need to check the oil levels regularly. The engine is equipped with an oil guard which shuts the motor off when the oil level is too low. Refill according to the guidelines specified in the owner's manual and then restart the engine. A 12 volt battery is supplied to give current for the electric starter. A manual start is also available. Mustang Units recommends the use of premium unleaded gasoline for engine longevity. The carburetor is factory preset and must be choked. If you have an LP fired model, the carburetor has been modified at the factory for LP use only. There is an external LP carburetor located on the cart which has two adjustment screws. This is the only place where adjustments may be made. The larger screw is the high load adjustment. It is factory set at two turns out. The smaller screw is the idle adjustment. It is factory set at two and a quarter turns out. This specially designed pump needs lubrication to ensure its operation. There is a window located at the back of the pump to show the oil level. If the level becomes too low, fill through this port with 30 weight non-detergent oil. Detergent oil will foam and lose lubricating abilities. The gearbox is also lubricated and has a check plug for inspection. If lubricant is necessary, use 85W-140 gear lubricant filling through this port. Now that you are familiar with the names and functions of the fittings and gauges, it is time to operate the equipment in a drain cleaning situation. First hook up the water supply. Check the inlet screen for any residues and clean. Connect the hose to the inlet assembly. Turn the inlet valve to an off position. Turn on the water and prime the pump as described earlier for the 10E and 12E units. When priming the 2200 series jetters, use a 5 8 minimum but preferably a 3 quarter garden hose. Open the water inlet valve. 
Move the outlet valve to an open position. Start the motor and wait a few seconds for the air to clear the lines and then close the outlet valve. When water is passing through the outlet hose flushing any debris which may clog the jetter head, turn the engine off. The pump is now primed and ready for jetting. With the 2200 series, priming can be done after the jetter tip is in place on the outlet hose. However, any debris in the system may lodge in the jetter head, so it is always best to flush the hose first. Whether you have the 10E, 12E, or the 2200 series, place the penetrating jetter head on the end of the jetter hose to hand tight. Then one quarter turn with a wrench. Do not over tighten. This could block the flow of water to the jets. Place the hose a few feet into the trap so it does not shoot about the room when the pump is turned on. Turn the water inlet on and open the outlet valve to start the pump. To start an LP fired unit, open the valve and prime the special carburetor by depressing this button a couple of times. The procedure at this point would be the same for a gasoline fired engine. Turn the engine to the on position and depress the electric starter. Release and the engine should be running. If you have a gas engine, you will need to choke your carburetor. If you are using the 10E, 12E, or the 2250 electric models, use the on-off toggle switch to turn the motor on. Make sure the pulse control lever is in the horizontal closed position, delivering the 1050 PSI from the pump. The pulse eliminator should be horizontal for pulse action to be delivered to the jetter hose. If operating the 2200 series, the pulse generator should be rotated completely counterclockwise to the out position, delivering the 2200 PSI to the jetter hose. Now move to the hose placed earlier in the drain. Feed the hose into the line. The jetter will automatically try to pull itself ahead in the drain. Reel outlet hose a little at a time so that the hose does not become kinked. When you notice that the jetter hose is not pulling itself through the drain, apply some forward pressure. If forward pressure does not work, try rotating the hose. Five turns in one direction, and ten turns back in the opposite direction, and finally five turns back in the original direction. Notice the movement of the jetter tip when rotating the hose. The natural curve of the hose helps the jetter head move around obstructions. Always turn the hose an equal number of rotations in each direction to keep the hose from twisting and catching in the line. If your jetter head is still blocked, move the pulse control lever on the 10 and 12 E to the vertical or open position. This reduces pressure to about 3 or 400 PSI and deepens pulse action. Keep the pulse eliminator in the horizontal position. If operating the 2200 series, the pulse generator should be turned clockwise all the way in for pulse generation. Repeat the procedure of forward pressure or rotation or the combination of the two while the jetter is set in these positions. Remember to rotate an even number of turns in both directions to keep your line straight. If you feel you are still making no progress, take some tape or a crayon and mark the hose. Check the progress after two or three minutes. If progress is being made, then you are probably into hard pack soap residues. Patience is necessary to allow the jetter to cut its way through these buildups. Travel time of six inches per minute is typical in these situations. Usually a line that has been opened by a cable methods have a tunnel that has been dug through it by the snake. The path of the cable is not usually a straight line. As your jetter enters this situation, it will first travel in the path of the cable and then continue to dig straight ahead into the residue. This process will repeat itself until it clears the blockage. Once you are all the way through the blockage, pull back very slowly on the jetter hose, which will wash the line clean. Don't hurry this process. If no progress is being made, some other obstacles may be in the way. Many times, with the use of roto cables, they will break in the line. Sometimes, several pieces of cable can be found in the same spot, typically in a bend. The Weston Hotel in Detroit recently recovered two laundry carts full of broken cable when repairing their lines. Try using the smaller trap jet assembly to squeeze through the broken cable. Oftentimes, cables will become wrapped in the jetter hose and actually be pulled back when the line is removed. If no progress is still being made and the pressures on the outlet gauge are normal, chances are the line may need to be repaired. If much dirt is being washed back by the jetter, it is possible the head has traveled through a break in the line or is penetrating through packed dirt caused by a broken line. 
pull the hose back slowly and try jetting past the broken line with the broken line jetter head. If the hose gets stuck pulling it back, it is possible you traveled through the break in the line and are now stuck in the break. To help remove the jetter hose, try flooding the line with water. Set the pulse control lever to the vertical position or turn the pulse generator clockwise all the way in. Flush the toilets adding more water to the lines and try to pull the hose free. If this does not work, attach the trigger gun in line and pull back on the hose as you pull and release the trigger. This quick surge of pressure causes the hose to jump and may release your hose. Finally, pour vegetable oil in the line to slicken it and using the previous steps, attempt to pull the hose free. Try accessing the line through another downstream cleanout for clearing the rest of the line. The jetter is able to proceed into a T and make dead 90 degree turns with the use of the cornering jetter heads on the 10 and 12E or the 2200 series. If jetting through traps less than two inches in diameter, use the trap jet assembly hose. Connect this hose directly to the outlet high pressure snap coupling. If you connect this hose to a 2200 series jetter, make sure the pressure relief valve is adjusted to give an outlet pressure reading of 1500 PSI maximum before you connect the hose. Not doing so may rupture the trap jet and cause severe injury. With pulse control vertical and pulse eliminator horizontal or the pulse generator all the way in, the hose should make its way around the bend. Use of the trigger gun is another aid in cornering causing the line to jump and travel through the bend. Once around the corner, the jetter will quickly surge ahead resume normal high pressure pulse settings and continue to jet. During the winter months, lines can freeze solid. Use the penetrating jetter head with or without hot water to jet through ice. Tape your line to determine your progress. Be patient and allow the pressure to do its work. After you are through the ice, pull back slowly on the hose to clean the line. The use of hot water can speed this process up substantially. Mustang Units offers a kerosene-fired, electric-powered, optional instant water heating device which delivers hot water at high pressure fast enough to keep up with your pump. It can be hooked up downstream from the pump. If hot water is run through the pump, make sure the temperature does not exceed 165 degrees. When operating your jetter during the winter months, it will be necessary to winterize your unit with antifreeze. Use automobile antifreeze mixed according to the temperature guidelines for your area. Operating your pump with water frozen in the hose lines can cause the pump to overheat. Frozen water in the pump will crack the housing. Place antifreeze above the pump and hook the garden hose to the inlet assembly running from the antifreeze container. The Mustang 5-gallon holding tank is perfect for this job. Place the outlet hose in an empty container if you wish to winterize your entire system. Otherwise, disconnect the outlet hose and replace with a smaller draining hose, or just collect the antifreeze as it comes out of the snap coupling. Holding the outlet hose firmly into the container, switch the pump on and cycle the pulse control and pulse eliminator valves. Turn the motor off and finally open and close the petcock valve. Do this after each use whenever water may freeze in the lines. If you do not winterize your outlet hose and it freezes, take the unit inside to thaw the hose. If you have a 2200 series jetter, use the same setup but you will need to turn on the machine with both the water inlet valve and the water outlet valve open. As soon as antifreeze is passing through the outlet hose, close the outlet valve and shut the motor off. 